Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, February 19th, 2013. Um, we will be approving the minutes of February 7th, presumably. Then we will be hearing a series of articles for the town meeting warrant on the personnel board uh, report for this year, salaries of town officers, um, the proposal to move the treasurer collector from an elected position to an appointed position, um, except Chapter 59, uh, Section 5N, relative to a veteran's tax reduction. Uh, light plant receipts transfer for this year, transfer to the reserve fund, if any, and a bill from the previous year. And uh, we have a couple of uh, minutes uh, votes that we might take up, but um, first I'm going to ask that we approve the minutes if everyone is ready to do that. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for February 7th, 2013. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving right on to the proposed warrant articles. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Jack Manning from the Personnel Board to join us and run through uh, any salient points of the Personnel Board's report for this year. Good evening. So uh, actually, uh, the only articles that I was really prepared to talk about tonight, although I'll talk about the personnel oh. uh, <laughs> report as well if you'd like me to, okay. were really articles four and five. That's, okay. uh, that's what uh, David Bassler had suggested was going to be on the agenda okay. this evening. I'm not sure we've completed the, uh, okay. I know we've had it through a number of iterations and drafts. Okay, so let me, just, let me just look here. Article D in our book is um, the, report. the report of the personnel board, so that would... Uh, so we'll just set that one aside and we'll return to that, I guess, Betty. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, say. if there are questions about it, I can do my best to try to field the questions that uh, you might have and, uh, and give it a go if you'd like me to. Um, you know what I think might be nice? Take two seconds to tell the people at home what the personnel board article covers. Because oh, I think people that's may a good not idea. be... Well, I think it really deals with uh, salary classifications in, in the town of Hingham. And uh, it also, uh, the, the personnel board is also responsible for um, uh, doing the negotiating uh, with the, uh, the various collective bargaining units, of which uh, are, there are um, five. Uh, you have DPW, you have the library, mm -hmm. um, you have fire, uh, and you have uh, two police departments. You have the patrolmen's the union, and you have um, superior officers, so those five. Uh, bargaining units also sit down and meet with us and we negotiate um, the, the contracts going forward. In this past year, we completed uh, the fire and we completed library. Uh, and then at the, at the end of 2013, we will have uh, three units coming up for negotiation. And all three have come to us and asked to uh, begin negotiations, and that is uh, DPW and the two police departments, so the patrolman's uh, union and the uh, superior officers. And that's really the responsibility of the personnel board. We do get requests um, uh, from, from different parties on personnel matters that will come in front of us. Um, extended uh, um, vacations, uh, people who go out on, on disability and leave and things of that nature will come in front of the personnel board. Um, we will hear the, uh, the, uh, the issue and uh, rule on it, if you will, um, and try to hear um, both sides of the story um, and try to uh, deal with the issues as best we can. Great. That's great. Uh, thank you for that little summary. I think sometimes sure. people arrive at town meeting not really sure what this article is, but the, we, that actually is, you know, Article 4 is to hear the report of the personnel board. Okay. Um, so. I think we just did. Okay. I think we did. <laughs> without, <laughs> without even trying, yeah. I just got to Is that the uh, abbreviated version, Jack? <laughs> that is the abbreviated but, version. but also under Article 4, if I'm not mistaken, comes any, anything set aside for um, collective bargaining uh, absolutely. that we have yeah. not. And, and, and that is, that's correct, Laura. Um, we, uh, we're, we're suggesting uh, this year that we set aside uh, $225,000. Um, the $225,000 is uh, to cover um, uh, union employees whose uh, contracts are coming up, uh, as well as uh, non-school, non-union employees um, who uh, 
who will be affected by increases. Um, fringe benefit changes and job reclassifications. Those are really the three areas. Um, and to, uh, to cover uh, all of the contingencies that I just mentioned for those three areas, we have uh, suggested 225,000. Roughly 199,000 for the uh, collective bargaining piece and the additional 26,000 to cover job reclassifications. There are really no changes uh, anticipated in the fringe benefit uh, picture at the moment. Okay, questions about Article 4? No. Nope. No. Okay, tell us about Article 5. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Article 5 <clears throat> is the um, is the stipends uh, that have been um, set aside or are suggested to be set aside for uh, a number of different positions within the town. Um, the selectman, the treasurer, collector, assessors, uh, town clerk, and municipal light board. Um, and uh, just to go down through these, uh, just to talk about them just for a few moments, uh, the town clerk um, uh, suggesting that, uh, well, staying with uh, grade 15 and grade 17, I have those dollar amounts. If you, if you want to hear them, I'm more than happy to share them publicly uh, with you. Um, the selectmen, uh, you've been incredibly generous to the town uh, over the last several years in foregoing uh, part of the uh, stipend uh, that uh, has been set aside over the past years historically. I think the, uh, the historical amounts were $2,500 for the chair and $2,000 for the remaining two selectmen. Uh, and then I think what happened over the last two years where you reduced the stipend uh, voluntarily um, to 2250 for the chair. like four years, wasn't it, Bruce? It was it four. Like it. <laughs> but one year runs into the next. <laughs> it looked like a two, but it's a four. Okay, that, that, that's what it is. Um, uh, and I think uh, what we're suggesting is that, uh, and, and this is our suggestion uh, from the point of the personnel board, that we reinstate uh, to previous levels, um, bring the selectmen, the chair, back up to $2,500 and the other two remaining selectmen up to $2,000. I think it's a tremendous gesture on your part. Um, it in no way reflects the amount of effort that, that you put in and the expense that you incur uh, to even do this job, much less pay for your gas. Um, and and I, we think it's time that those numbers be uh, brought back to where they were. So that, that's our feeling. Uh, the assessor's office uh, staying at the uh, historical uh, uh, amounts, which I think are $1,800. Um, and uh, the chair, uh, 2000 The municipal light board was 214 It's an odd number, but $214 each for the municipal light board. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Comments or thoughts on Article 5? No? Bruce? Um, thank you, Jack. I, the personnel board, I understand, in conversations with Ted, has proposed doing a survey of, uh, of selectmen uh, uh, stipends to see what other towns are doing. And uh, I appreciate that effort, um, uh, certainly. But the, the other issue I think I just would like to throw into the hopper is uh, part of, of the expenses that we incur uh, while it was intended to use the uh, $2,000 to, to uh, pay, reimburse for some of those, but there are other expenses that we, the only way to recapture those would be on a federal tax return. And uh, I would hope that when you look at it, look at that issue as, as well. How do other towns handle it? And my motivation in this is not because I don't expect to get uh, um, humongous amounts of money, but more the concern of there are people who serve on this board who incur some expenses, and I would hope that we'd want to we'd want to make sure that the people who do serve come from all facets of of life here in the town, so that talented people who perhaps don't make as much money that they could not afford to incur those expenses, uh, that they would have an ability for them to uh, to participate, and I think that's what I believe is what. Uh, the personal board was looking to consider to make sure that we attract the talent that we'd like to keep. And, and Bruce, I, 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 it's an excellent <laughs> point, and, and, and I think one that really does, uh, um, it, it needs some consideration. I think the study that we originally uh, uh, undertook was to look at just comparative numbers to see how you compared with, uh, with other towns. Clearly, there's no way to really compensate you. Uh, $2,500 or $2,000 doesn't even begin to cover the expenses um, that you, uh, that you uh, pay out to do this job. 
and, and then, of course, uh, all of your work is voluntary. So uh, we're quite aware, certainly those of us who are interested in, in town government and, and who can see it, and those of us on the personnel board are very aware of it. Um, there's no compensation to you at all. The $2,500 or $2,000 simply doesn't do it. Um, we can expand it, which I think we would probably have to do. I think when we originally um, undertook the, uh, the idea, it was to really try to understand whether the towns in that famous <coughs> 20 towns that we compare ourselves to, um, what they were being, uh, what the selectmen were being paid. Um, if you will, or the stipend that was being provided. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should expand it and take a look at it. Is there expense reimbursement and, and things of that nature, just so that we can come back and, and, and share that, uh, those comments with you. I think that would be an important thing to do. It doesn't mean we have to act on it, but I, I think it would be a good thing to do. What if we waited until that survey was done? Well, uh, <clears throat> were you imagining having another, a different recommendation for no. this town meeting? No, we were not. No, so no, that will take some time. Yeah. I think it would take a little bit of time to, to, to get the information yeah, that, in front of us. Yeah, yeah that's, that was my thinking. And, uh, you know, there are probably some recommendation as to what, if any, changes and how they would be implemented. Sure. Uh, because uh, there's a rule in America, you shouldn't vote your own salary. That's, uh, and that's a good rule, so. Yeah, I'm, and I'm quite ambivalent about this because I didn't get into this for the money. So I'd rather none see us, the money. None of us did. Go to somebody <laughs> else, to be honest with you. Certainly. Certainly. I, I, I think those of us on the personnel board who voiced an opinion on this, and it was, it was a unanimous decision on all of our parts, it was our suggestion that we reinstate it back to the original levels, um, and that we also undertake a study to, just to take a look at it. I think sure. it would be an important information standard to, to have and to know about. Um, Ultimately, um, this is with your consent. This is, might be our suggestion, but it's your consent. So I think if we do gather this information, it might be useful uh, for you to know. Let us know if you find out if somebody gets cars, <laughs> you know, wine, <laughs> chocolates. Okay. Yeah, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> not Farmer's currently serving it. Cookies they're they're probably dog, fulfilling their obligations. I know, you didn't. That's yeah. not. Yeah, they're probably fulfilling their obligations from jail, but right. that's okay. <laughs> yeah. They can still get to the phone. Well, I'll just say, having served under uh, both uh, reimbursement schemes, and I think that uh, I think I may have been the one who suggested that we lower our reimbursement um, when uh, the recession hit and we were having to cut uh, everybody's budget in town so greatly. I would just say, since I have no qualm about speaking about this, since I will not be on the board when. <laughs> the uh, increase goes into place but I think it I think it is the right thing I know that uh, it, just from my uh, personal standpoint you know being uh, uh, you know busy putting kids through college and stuff the expenses that are involved in this uh, job are, are a real thing to me mm -hmm. and so you wouldn't want anybody mm -hmm. to be put yeah. off uh, I know none of us do it for the money but I could imagine somebody being a little put off by not being able to, re, you know, to to uh, cover their expenses in, right. in doing this job. So I would hate to see that happen. Right. So and I would recommend. I, I think that was as much our point as anything. Certainly, you know, we can't aggregate all your hours together and pay you some kind of a of a per hour charge because you do great work. Um, and I you don't do recommend it. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and you do I it think on that's a, a budget buster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you do it on a voluntary basis, as many of our boards do. Yes. Uh, and, and that's the benefit that this town gets. That when you, you look across all the different boards that, uh, um, that are in this town and the wonderful people that serve, uh, the people are doing it because they want to they give back to the town. Right. And it's, it's that great nature that makes this town what it is. Okay, so um, yeah. any other questions or comments on Article 4 or 5? Anybody out there, any questions or comments on Article 4 or 5? Do you want to move those two to yes. advisory? Um, yes, would you, would you, anybody like to make a uh, recommendation that we... Can uh, I do D&E together? Sure, yeah, sure. sure. Okay. I move we recommend to the advisory committee Articles D and E as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jack. And Thank, you we'll very well. Thank you, Jack. It would be you. very interesting to hear what the results yeah. of that. Uh, it's great to study. see all of you. <laughs> you going back to Florida? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm just going to go back home. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good.
Okay, the next uh, article on our list of articles to discuss for town meeting is the question of the Government Study Committee's recommendation to change the treasurer collector position from an elected position to an appointed position. I see two members of the Government Study Committee here. Are you all going to join us, both of you, or? Okay, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Wow. Why don't you pull, yeah, pull that microphone over so that it reaches both of you and if you could introduce yourselves. Thank you. My name is Phil Edmondson. My name is Judy Cole. And Judy, of course, is the chair of the Government Study Committee. And uh, I uh, have been asked by the Government Study Committee to spend uh, some continued time uh, on the matter of uh, the treasurer collector and changing the office from uh, an elected position to an appointed one. Uh, we have met with you once earlier this session, uh, at which point in time, if I recall correctly, you encouraged us to continue our work. Uh, you had some questions about some specifics, and uh, we have continued to research some of the details uh, of the matter. Uh, we've been assisted very much by the town administrator and by the uh, new town council, uh, Mr. Coughlin, who has been very, very helpful. My compliments uh, uh, to him and your choice of him. Uh, and we want to report to you today on our latest discussion and ask for your input. And please know that we are going to seek similar input, uh, if at all possible, from the advisory committee before we make our final recommendation uh, on some of the very important details of how to propose this question to the town. One of the things that has changed since we looked at this a year ago is that the uh, Commonwealth, which controls many questions around the form of town government, uh, now allows us to make a change like this without having uh, any process that includes a ballot vote. So we may now go a, a, a different route, which was not available to us a year ago. Uh, that route would still require a vote at town meeting, and it would still require a, uh, a state law be passed. Uh, but uh, it is our understanding, again, both from a town council and from the town administrator, uh, that in essence the legislature has said, so long as you're not changing your form of government, that is a change like moving from three selectmen to five selectmen or something, or from a, uh, a, town, administra a town administrator to a charter, or as long as you're not changing uh, the form of government, you may change matters like this without a, uh, a vote. And implicit in that, of course, is the, their decision or their determination that, in fact, a change like this does not rise to the occasion of needing a vote of the, of the citizenry. That said, that option is still available to us as well. So the, the town the government study committee is considering two alternatives. Uh, one would be similar to last year, where we have a vote at town meeting, uh, and then we go to a ballot question, but the ballot question would not happen immediately this April. It would happen at a future uh, town election, perhaps not until a year later, unless there was some other intervening town-only election. And uh, at that uh, election, what would be different than what we tried a year ago is that we are now, we are allowed under a different process to have a uh, much greater description on the ballot. And the Government Study Committee believes that if there was more information on the ballot, uh, that there's a greater likelihood that the uh, town citizenry would vote in favor of this. And if you will recall, Last year, the vote at the town meeting was an overwhelmingly favorable vote, and the ballot vote lost by 18 votes. So, uh, so that is one option. Uh, and the second option is to forego the town uh, election and simply have the two-step process. So uh, the, the pros and cons, as we have debated them on our committee, are fairly obvious. On the one hand, it is better to bring a question to the citizens for a vote. Uh, that uh, implies more involvement on the citizenry in a question that involves taking away the citizens' right to vote for an office. So that certainly makes sense under uh, one uh, set of judgments. On the other hand, 
Um, the legislature is saying to us, in essence, by this change, that those that taking questions like that to the ballot should be reserved for changes in the form of government, that we're drawing the line in the sand in a different place that's inappropriate for towns uh, to go to. We'll give you the option if you still want to do it the old way, but we really want you to go the new way. And they believe there's enough process in this other route, in part because the only thing that, that I think, uh, this, according to Mr. Alexiatis, that the legislature is still concerned about would be that a town might be trying to change its office like this from elected to appointed in a political form, so to speak. They, they don't want to see one faction in town moving against an elected official through this process. And so their thinking is that you'd have a town meeting vote, but that could still be a very political event and divisive event. But then there would be a legislative hearing before the legislature uh, uh, votes on it. And that hearing in a committee would allow for the sitting town uh, treasurer collector or anyone else to be, to be present and to speak their mind. And if the legislature felt that what was in front of them was a political battle that really wasn't worthy of this kind of change, they could then reject it. And alternatively, if it was a town where there was a general consensus among the town's leadership that this was an appropriate thing uh, in order to modernize the town government and make it more efficient and effective to go forward, that indeed hearing no uh, complaint of it as a political matter, uh, that they would then approve it. So we have two forms, two forms, neither of which are the same as what we undertook last year, uh, both of which are worthy of our consideration. Uh, the Government Study Committee discussed this last week at our meeting. I would say the general consensus was that it favored the new form of going forward with a town meeting vote only and not a ballot vote. It felt that was more appropriate to the times and given our relationship <coughs> with the legislature. However, at least one member of our committee uh, has since made known to us uh, that she would feel uncomfortable with that and she would feel it more appropriate to use the old route and have the ballot. So we're unsure which to recommend to the town. And we thought that it would be beneficial to us before we take our final vote and recommendation to hear from you, to answer any questions you have, to seek your input, to do the same with, if not the whole advisory committee, at least some representatives of the advisory committee, uh, before we can make a final recommendation. Now, any recommendation we make to you can obviously be changed between now and town meetings, so long as it's within the substance of the article, uh, and it might be changed on town meeting floor. So the good news is we have a lot more tools uh, in, in our toolbox. Um, and that w there's a general consensus on the Government Study Committee that we should go forward. This is an important issue that if we don't move it forward this year, it will sit for another 10 years until maybe then the town will again consider another Government Study Committee. And that perhaps in that 10 years, our sitting capable, wonderful treasurer collector will, retri will retire and that we will then be faced uh, with the downsides that we discussed at our last meeting that having an elected treasurer collector limits the number of candidates that we might have. And unlike last time, where we had a great a candidate internally, the number two in our department, who lived in Hingham and was willing to go through the election process, if it were to happen tomorrow, our number two in the department does not live in Hingham, and thus, short of her moving, wouldn't qualify. So for that and the other reasons that we presented to you earlier, we still expect to recommend to you that the town consider this change. But we're debating these two different forms, and we really would appreciate your input and thoughts tonight or as time moves forward. I think this is a good time to talk about it. <laughs> um, any uh, thoughts or comments? Um, Phil, in your opening comments, just for clarification, you indicated that changes to the town administrator position, coming town manager, or changes to the number of selectmen would be considered differently because that would be changing the form of government. Could you carry further the thought that uh, we know it's treasurer collector now, 
but suppose um, the other elected boards would come up for consideration. Into which camp do you suspect the state would uh, uh, drive us or suggest to us we consider this change? Do you have a, th a thought on that, or is that a different question? Yeah, I, I have to admit, Bruce, it, it did not come up in the conversations, mm -hmm. and so I, I don't know. Um, I think we tried to think of other positions that were similar to treasurer collector, mm -hmm. and the only one we could come up with was town clerk. Mm -hmm. um, but we believe that there may be other reasons why the, the state may look at the town clerk who has a, a function in the form of elections uh, in a different fashion, but that would just be speculation. Most of the conversation that we are aware of around this change in the approach by the legislature is about this specific question. So this question is not just going on in Hingham. It's mm -hmm. going on in yeah. many okay. towns around the Commonwealth. It happened last year in many towns around the Commonwealth that went the process without a ballot vote. It has been happening for years. Mm -hmm. Hingham is, you know, in the middle of the wave. We're not at the front, we're not at the back. <laughs> we're in the middle of the wave. And the reasons we are considering in this are the same reasons other towns. Mm -hmm. have, have made the change or are considering the change because they want to expand the pool of candidates for a job that becomes more technical and frankly more important to our town going forward. Okay. No, good. Thank you. Sorry. I, I suspect Mr. Alexiatis might be able to research it more or... Well, it, I, I think so. I mean, yeah. as you know, we're examining the purchase of the water company. Yeah. Uh, that raises a whole series of other questions as to how it, be, it would be managed. And I was just curious as if there were any um, guidelines. And you've explained them quite well in yeah. terms of how the... Yeah. All I know for sure is the, the way it was explained to me is that the things that cannot be done without a ballot vote are the quote unquote form of government. And the examples given to me were a number of members of the Board of Selectmen, whether you have a town administrator versus a town manager, whether you have a town charter, those are the sort of things that, that still require a ballot vote. Okay, that, that's clear, okay. I think it's important that this happen. The manner in which it happens, we would look to you all, but as more and more towns use the new method of the non-ballot vote, I wouldn't be as troubled as if we were the first ones to try it. And the fact that it lost last time by 18 votes, where the question was at the very bottom of the ballot and was not, did not have any clear remarks with it. People who didn't go to town meeting, who didn't read, could perhaps have been confused. The other issue that to me is as important as doing this is to make sure that the current treasurer, Jean Montgomery, and she's sitting here in the audience, is very comfortable with this and that we have taken care of her so that it is a transition, that we can bridge her service because she worked before she became elected. She actually had a job. And as we move this to an appointed position, it also gives the ability for this function that and Phil and Judy and Eva, you're absolutely right, has become much more critical and much more technical that you couldn't just walk into it and on day one, but it allows the treasurer collector today to do succession planning, which we don't do. Um, and as you said, Ms. Montgomery is here this evening. Uh, we've had ongoing discussions be between the treasurer collector, myself, and and Ted Alexiatis about a number of very important details. Uh, I would describe those at, at, at risk of not capturing all the essence of it as being positive, again, constructive so far. Uh, Ms. Montgomery will decide you know, when and how she may choose to, to speak about the matter. I would say that, let me put it this way, our committee, the Government mm -hmm. Study Committee, will not recommend something to the town that Ms. Montgomery is not supportive of. So uh, I think that's, that's a consensus within our committee. So rather than putting her on the spot today, because she deserves to you know, decide when and how she may speak, uh, we have a good communication, and it is not our intention to go forward and recommend anything to the town that uh, is not uh, something that 
Ms. Montgomery supports. Is there just one person on the government study committee that doesn't like the non ballot Yes, to the best of, to the best Is that of the my proper knowledge. way to say that? Okay. Yes, yes, that Good was enough. The, that was Good the, enough. <laughs> the conversation. Okay. That's right. And you know, within a group of six or seven of that's us that, who are very, very interested yes. in, in politics and town government, to ever get all of us to feel one way on anything is surprising. Uh, I, I would say that I think I think our committee was well chosen. We are not. Uh, we don't walk in uh, uh, in the on the same lines, but we all come with a lot of experience uh, serving the town. So. I am. Amazed to hear of this new process that we didn't even know about. Was this legislation that was passed since the last time that we? Yeah, that's my did understanding. Wow. Uh, and uh, so the, in, in fact, Ms. Did Montgomery it? brought it to our attention as much as anyone. No uh, and one town that we have looked at quite closely is the town of Avon. Uh, but a number of towns successfully took this route starting last fall. Well, I'm just going to. Uh, Based just on what you've told me here today and what you're considering since you've asked for input, I would say that um, in terms of whether or not to bring it to a ballot vote, I would feel very differently if we did not have open town meeting. But we have open town meeting where every citizen may come and vote on this question, even if we don't take it to a ballot vote, everyone has the ability to do that. And uh, when doing it in a town meeting context, everybody has an opportunity to hear discussion and get questions answered, which was not an option at all on the ballot last year. And let's face it, even with a paragraph for and a paragraph against, it would still be a very limited, um, a very limited method of helping people think about uh, what they think about this proposal. Um, so uh, the fact that we have open town meeting and no one actually would lose their right to vote on this uh, if we did not take it to a ballot vote makes me think uh, that that would be a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. <coughs> Uh, probably preferable, in fact, in terms of knowing that everybody who is actually voting on it has actually heard and considered the pros and cons. Um, and I also think, uh, based on my own discussions uh, with the treasurer collector, one of the things that came home to me very strongly is um, the, our, uh, how it is not in our the town's interest or anyone's interest to have the uh, current occupant of the position kind of waiting for a long time to see how this is going to turn out. And a ballot vote a year from now is a long time, and that is a long time to ask someone to be up in the air about their job. That's true. And since we are all agreed that we do not want to lose our treasurer collector, it's a good idea to take, uh, to take a road that, um, that shortens up this process considerably so that we can hopefully make sure uh, that the transition is uh, quick and seamless and acceptable to everyone. So those are my thoughts on I think if, I'm, if I may add, uh, Laura makes a great mm -hmm. uh, a point in strengthening one of your roles is to help us to, uh, strengthen the government uh, structure and strengthening town meeting uh, I know was particularly of a concern to our former town moderator and the current one and uh, what Laura suggests is a, is a good uh, guideline because it is a significant change and we're not taking anyone's right away. Uh, because they have the opportunity to express that at town meeting. No, I, I, I agree. We would still have both the belt and suspenders. We would still yeah, have the belt right. of all the, the open hearings that have taken place and will continue to take place and the suspenders uh, of town meeting. And uh, um, so, I mean, that's, uh, that's sufficient input, frankly, for, <laughs> for my purposes. But obviously, if you have other questions or would like to discuss it or, uh, you know, open well, it up in any way, that's, that that's fine. But we will be, we'll be meeting again in a week, at which point in time we, we hope to have, be prepared to make a, a very detailed <laughs> presentation to you. And we apologize that this is taking longer than you would like. I know you're trying to move along through the warrant as This as is one that we can. really need to get right, yeah, you know. It is. Have you done a recent survey to see how many towns are now appointed versus elected? Because I know there seemed like there was a cascade of them, and then they began kind of dribbling. And yeah, I don't know. Eva, no. do you know? Have we done? No. Yeah, Eva heard. Marks, another uh, member of the committee. Uh, that's good. Uh, I'll take that as advice that we should do that and have the, <coughs> that information available uh, to you and to uh, others. Uh, 
and to the town as we move forward. And I'll just add that I, I do see the legislature's point about wanting to, mm -hmm. you know, have the, the veto over, over this process, wanting to be able to look into what a town is doing and have there be a check or a balance because um, one does hear of uh, unpleasant situations developing in other towns around issues like this and so I understand why they're a little bit on their guard but I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, um, convey what, what has happened here uh, in a way that's to the credit of the town. Yeah, Ted said that if the town, through the, through the town meeting, did approve this and we went to the legislature, they would have a hearing and that the best thing that can happen would be for the treasurer collector and the town administrator to go to that hearing hand in hand and say we are in support of this and maybe the board and encouraged to too? see that. Well, you know, uh, obviously, <laughs> you, you'll have your chance to go on record. So. <laughs> uh, we would, of course, be thankful for that, but, but uh, my understanding is if that happened, <clears throat> and no other groundswell of people showed up at the meeting, then, then that's the case. But if a groundswell of people did show up and say, no, what you're really doing is railroading this, you know, uh, collector, uh, treasurer collector, and this is really just a divisive political battle. You're trying to use this mechanism to, to throw out somebody through the back door. That's the sort of thing that the legislature will not support. And that's quite reasonable, I think. So, there, so there's belt and suspenders. And I'm going to need help with this metaphor. So there's really there's <laughs> something stop else, right there. something else holding stop. the pants up. For this process, okay? A couple of buttons. Yeah, a couple of go. buttons. Right. Thank you. That's safe. Okay. Any other comments no, or no, questions? Good. Um, okay. Is there anybody here who uh, has not uh, maybe hasn't used an opportunity to <clears throat> give some thoughts about this? Who'd like to speak? Nope. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for your very thoughtful process. I feel mm -hmm. like we're going to end up with. Um, the best solution here because you've given it so much time and attention. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks you for your all. patience. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, and our, the next article we will be discussing is Article, what is Article M, M at the moment? Um, but that is not. That is, right yes, here. no, it Power. is. Oh, I, I'm on MM, sorry. M -M. I'm on the just wrong a M -M. M -M. Just one M. Just yes. one M. I've got it now. Let's welcome the town's uh, veterans agent, Keith German, to talk to us about the Valor Act. Will the town accept Chapter 59, Section 5N of the Massachusetts General Laws, which would permit establishment of a program to allow veterans to volunteer to provide services in return for reduction in the real property tax obligation of that veteran? So tell us about the Valor Act. So the Valor Act, which um, stands for Veterans Access, Livelihood, Opportunity, and Resources, also known as the Valor Act, was passed by the legislation um, last May. And it requires local option um, for this piece of it. There's actually a baker's dozen, if you will, pieces to this. There's 13 separate pieces. I won't go into to all of them, but I'll, uh, I'll summarize it, that the legislation had created increased supports for veterans-owned businesses, full-star families, military children, and higher education access in the Commonwealth. In addition, all veterans, as defined, are eligible to reduce their real property tax bill based on a total number of community service hours provided. So what we're um, attempting to um, sponsor is a warrant article which would begin an administrative program for a maximum number of 10 veterans um, to utilize. And if these uh, selected candidates themselves could not perform the volunteer services assigned to them, then a representative for the candidate may be able to perform the volunteer services, which the services would be 125 hours, equaling a $1,000 um, exemption in that given fiscal year. So, um, Just so I understand, yeah. The part of the Valor Act we're you're proposing we accept is just the part relative to the property tax. The rest is all acts of the legislature. The, the rest of it is, it all, is it all legislative town. already, and okay. this part of it where we're asking for an exemption. This is the part that exemption. requires uh, right. town meeting. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Because if as the rest of it is already law, right? That's right. Okay. That's okay. right. Okay. I think this is great. Now, does this fall into the same uh, internal revenue income? That's what I think. This is a really good question. Uh, I don't know where we stand with that. 
This whole question of of the oh, IRS man. deciding that this fallen that that the tax <coughs> income off. tax that the property tax re rebates or reductions consist of income and that we have to withhold taxes where I do not know the answer to that but I'll be glad to look okay. into it. Yeah. We need to It's it's written in the act and I'll I'll just oh. uh, I'll read it. It, it may speak to some of that. We did ask on uh, the town accountant Mr. Nickerson to look into it. Um, but what it says in here is paragraph 7 says establishes a municipal veteran volunteer program under which municipalities may reduce the property tax bill of veterans who volunteer their time. The bill directs that such veterans must be treated as employees for the purposes of unemployment insurance and that their property tax deductions be treated as remunerations for unemployment benefit purposes, thus complying hmm. with federal law. Wow. That's a little more complex. And does that mean yeah. when they finish their 125 hours that they are eligible to collect unemployment? From what we were to gather from this, it says it's using that to to encapsulate that federal law that you're talking about that I know that's the senior tax work yep. program is currently embattled with and I believe it was a 7.5 percent and only handles the OBRA the OBRA yeah. section if I have that right I think it's a 7.5 uh, percent um, deduction to cover that so yes in effect if you're getting a thousand dollars off on a tax exemption you would be it would be seen as income for that year of a thousand dollars instead of um, just an exemption, is which, which we were hoping for. And thus, you would have to pay a 7.5% or $75 of that would be considered um, that's taxable. Now, would that offset unemployment? Because what you were reading there, or right. shall we just toss this whole thing to the lawyers? <laughs> yeah. Why don't we do that? I think we better do that. Why it's, don't we do that? Very, uh, not well, that I don't want to debate right. this for the next not, hour. But I, none of us being lawyers sitting here. Correct. We have a not million, that we know of. Put that under the same question. Into our heads. Yes. I, I do have one suggestion. Let's make the math easy. Mm -hmm. Why 125 hours? Because not? that's how the current law is written. Because it also the president just proposed a change in the in the minimum hourly payment. This would not meet that standard at 125 hours. So why don't we make it 100? Can we do that, or is that a question that? Uh, it's written in there. It says the total of 125 volunteer services would be completed within the fiscal year and that the town would operate and keep its financial records. The $1,000 reduction would in turn be applied to that same fiscal year. So it's kind of already written in. Yeah. Um, Very strange. And it's Very, also written in, unlike, unlike your, uh, one of the other articles that I alluded to, which um, they'll be seeking to have that proxy, that other person mm -hmm. that was taken in into account. And it's already written in here that someone could have that done. Uh -huh. Again, this isn't just for seniors. This could be a veteran no, could be anywhere yes. from 18 to you know 100 years old. And or also older. clearly, without there's no age or income or asset right. restriction. Just any veteran Correct. would be eligible for Correct. this. Correct. So that's another reason why we um, are kind of looking at it as, um, I guess, a chance to do some good to reduce the tax, which which is what you all have mentioned as as part of your initiative uh, this year. But starting with 10, um, knowing full well that we also have to employ those people. I have to find 10 things for people to do. And um, we wanted to start so um, we had a, ha a grasp on it, a handle on it. I mean, there's always room for expansion or reduction either way. But oh, are you allowed to expand the number? Oh, absolutely. That 10 so, was so something that... So we get to set the number? Correct. I see. Correct. And I... Um, I see. We had long discussions uh, at the Veterans Council about it. I mean, there was numbers, you know, 30, why are we starting with 10, why not 30, 20, and, you know, it's... Uh, it, again, is hard, it's it is hard to match people. Correct. Um, so correct. I think it I mean, a good idea we, we do have some, um, we had written down some examples of the volunteer service that may be provided. For instance, um, this year or this May, we'll be unveiling, if you will, uh, GAR Hall um, during the history... Um, or the Museum Day in Hingham in May. So we hope to have that open like, like Old Ordinary and Old Ship and Old Derby. We want to have that open, and what a great way to, to uh, what a win-win for the town. Put volunteer veterans there, let them reduce their tax, um, real estate taxes, and uh, provide a service to the town. Have that open so, so people can go and enjoy that place. It's, it's, a, it's a museum, and it should be, um, it should be utilized. That was one of the one of the re, uh, things um, maintaining the the grave markers uh, throughout the town. As you know, there's six six um, privately owned cemeteries in the town. 
veterans graves new uh, number over 3300 at this point so it's tough for for one person myself to to take that on so that would be was one of the examples and um, other things that go along with uh, some of the ceremonies or things we just had a uh, a uh, training seminar here at town hall um, those people were would could have used some hours there to um, the support staff those people that you don't see behind the scenes um, other than Lisa Potts and myself um, to do some of that stuff so those are just some of the ideas and it was tough to think up a lot of them I know that well, of course every, they, they they don't have to work for the veterans not necessarily office, not at for all for instance for instance department. I get approached every year by the Department of Elder Services can I employ um, some of their folks and I usually take on two or three that I find stuff for them to do so um, in actuality I know the number is 40 right now it's possible that some of those 40 are, are already veterans and may already meet this criteria and thus so would we would be taking them slots. off the roll at elder great. services and switching 10 <clears throat> potential seats right over to this uh, valor act if if passed you know some of the other things they could help with is uh, randy and harry and roger are trying to scan all of the documents that they have uh -huh. yeah boxes and boxes and file cabinets and this is something they could do I know Eileen's got plenty of work the library has more than enough to do so I think I think 10 a good round number yeah. and, it, and it depends on their their age and their ability and what they can do you know uh, it may be even greater things more labor intensive mm -hmm. if it's um, someone of age that, that is of working age and just maybe is a full-time student and now they're not in school during the summer but they still own some property and they need that um, that relief well, uh, unless I'm wrong, I'm sensing a lot of support for the program Definitely. here. Definitely. I think, a I think lot of the questions about the tax ramifications, yep. which you'd like to have answered. Answer. Before yeah, we I think I the real importance here is to get it started. Right. And, yep. and, and I think 125 hours for $1,000 should be revisited, but we can deal with that next year. I think the legislature has to revisit that. Yep. Yep. That's what I said. We can, yeah. when we're up there on a couple of these okay. other issues that we're going to them on. Okay. Yep, I'm in support. Yep. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll revisit this when we get these tax questions answered. But it sounds like we're very supportive of the. Did we move for, or recommend to advisory the tax work off ones? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do it with this? Because it's the same questions. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we recommend Article M, the Valor Act, to the advisory committee for their consideration at town meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. While Keith is here, why don't we thank he and Lisa for the amazing, wonderful, informative seminar on battle mines that Keith coordinated to talk about what people coming back from a war zone go through. It was, it was truly amazing. We had some 80 uh, first responders and healthcare officials here at uh, Sanborn Auditorium uh, last Tuesday. So it was, was a, it was a banner event and a lot of uh, education and mm -hmm. continuing education credits for the war. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was a stormy day. Yeah. Well, well done, sir. Thank you. Well done, Definitely. gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope we'll do that again. Okay. Okay. Next uh, article. Easy, easy one. Yes. Now Gee. we're down to the the boilerplate ones, the light plant receipts. Ask the assistant town administrator to. Explain what we're doing. This is one of our perennial articles. Every year we uh, get a payment from the light plant, uh, $500,000, which is transferred to the general fund to reduce the tax rate. Um, it used to be 450 about a year ago. It moved up to 500000 Thank you, Hingham Municipal Light Plant. And the more they sell, the more we get. So <laughs> keep selling. And, and thank you for the service that they uh, rendered to us during the storm as well. Yes. Okay, Irma, sure. you're. Okay. I move we recommend Article G, Electric Light Department Receipts, to the Advisory Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Article J is to transfer funds to the reserve fund. The reserve fund is the fund that we set aside every year for unexpected um, expenses. And uh, sometimes at this time of year, if we've had a particularly bad winter or something like that, it's necessary to uh, put some more money in the reserve fund for this year. As of right now, we don't see any need to do that, but we could always revisit this 
I might recommend that we approve, recommend this article, but as you all know, we can revisit it if need be uh, before town meeting time. Okay. If we need, if if we have five more storms like the one we just had, <laughs> we will have to do that. But okay. Right now we're okay. So um, can I make a motion? Okay, I'll make a recommendation that we uh, recommend <clears throat> Article J, the transfer of funds to the reserve fund, uh, to advisory for their consideration. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, and our final article for discussion this evening is a bill from a previous year. Um, people may not know that if the town uh, has a bill for a given fiscal year and we don't pay it in that given fiscal year, we cannot pay it without approval from town meeting. So I'll ask the assistant town administrator to explain how we come by this bill that uh, was not paid in the proper fiscal year. This bill represents the unpaid balance of the FY 2012 emergency water fee. We pay a certain amount to Aquarian each year to have emergency water available uh, at demand, on demand for fighting fires and, and such things. So the fourth quarter bill was presented after the books had closed. Normally this would have been handled with, an, uh, with a transfer from the reserve fund. The, the reason it was higher than the budgeted amount was there was a large uh, rate increase last year, which I'm sure you remember. So uh, yes, yes, we do. We have approximately $9,400 in a balance left that we have to carry forward to this year's town meeting. And the point is we just didn't get this bill in time to pay. We didn't get the bill until the end of August. The moral of the story to the town's creditors is send us your bills in a timely fashion and then we will pay. I, <clears throat> I have a meeting with Aquarian on March the 1st and I'll bring this with me. Yeah. So. Um, any other questions, nope. comments? Mm -hmm. Can we have a motion? I move we recommend Article KK, bill from a previous fiscal year, which would be the FY 2012 emergency water bill to the advisory committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we have a couple of votes to uh, take here, recommended votes, so maybe somebody could make a couple of motions on I'll, it. I'll make a motion that we approve a one-day liquor license for Thomas Hoffman for the Hingham Sports Partnership annual comedy night and dinner fundraiser at the Loring Theater on Sunday, April 7th from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I move we approve a one-day liquor license for Thomas Hoffman for the Hingham Sports Partnership's Big Green Party at 18 Shipyard Drive on Saturday, March 2nd 2013 from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that brings us to Selectman and Town Administrator reports. I'm those of you who uh, join us every meeting will notice that our Town Administrator is not with us this evening. He's been ill for about a week with something which strongly resembles the flu. And if he hadn't had the flu shot, I would say must be the flu. But um, we hope that he will be joining us uh, once again. Uh, shortly, so I'll just ask the assistant town administrator if there's anything to report. I haven't anything to report this evening. Okay, uh, so we'll move along. Any reports? Just one thing. I'd like to recognize in the audience our Boy Scout, and I don't know which troop you're from. Troop one. From Troop One, who is, I assume, earning his citizenship in the community badge. Yes. On your way to Eagle. And if you'll give me your name, I'll say it. Leland Franks. So thank you for coming and way to go. Keep going. <laughs> Anything to report, sir? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. Just uh, you can't talk that. Can uh, you? No. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna. I don't take on a Boy Scout. That's it. <laughs> well, I just had one item that I wanted to report, which is that the uh, the Hingham Affordable Housing Trust met last Wednesday and um, had our first discussion since the 80 Beale Street project is, is just about out of our hands, should be closing within the week. Um, the the uh, closing date was dependent on uh, getting approval from the ZBA for the insubstantial changes that were recommended both by the developer and by the housing trust. That, those approvals came about two weeks ago and so they have 30 days to close and so we will be closing on that very soon so we had our discussion on last Wednesday okay what now what next and well um, it's the beginning we we talked about a lot of um, a lot of things that we have discussed in the past as possible directions to go we're gonna have more discussion 
Um, and, um, but uh, one of the things that, that we did in the process of that discussion was revisit <coughs> the allocation plan because some members uh, in, in light of, uh, in light of what, what we were talking about, about the future, we're feeling like we've been passing the same allocation plan every year since the, since, uh, the trust has had an allocation plan. And um, they felt like uh, it, didn't re it didn't reflect what uh, the trust wanted to do going forward. So the trust revisited the allocation plan article and amended it. And it will be, uh, this happened right before I left town on Thursday, so I will bring back to this board Thanks. the new proposed article for you to look at, and we will revisit that um, and hear about it. Um, one of the things that came up that has been discussed, and I, I know, uh, Select Water, when you were the liaison to the Affordable Housing Trust, it's always been an issue, the, the whole idea of the allocation plan has been very hard to, to manage. Um, when we look at how the trust has actually spent funds, a lot of questions come up. For example, the allocation plan makes a distinction between money spent for preserving affordable housing and money spent for building affordable housing. Well, when the trust bought 80 Beale Street, the plan was to preserve affordable housing because that house represented six units of affordable housing because it was a, it was a group home. And so the idea was we didn't want these six units of affordable housing to go away. Then, uh, when we did our study, we discovered that it really was in no way um, financially possible or feasible, or did it make sense to, to preserve the structure? And the whole project changed into creating affordable housing. Mm, right. But we had spent the money thinking we were, were going to be pres preserving it. And so uh, how do you classify that? Did we spend that money to preserve it? Is the fact that it changed into something later changed it? That's one issue. Another issue you might look at, our first big project, of course, was the helping the town to acquire Lincoln School Apartments. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it were not for the unrestricted funds that had been given by the CPC to the trust, the town wouldn't have had the resources to do the due diligence for that pur purchase, and we just wouldn't have been able to do that. So about $90,000 was spent on that due diligence, and then it was, uh, f as you might say, it was fronted by the Affordable Housing Trust and reimbursed by the town. When the town purchased it, the trust did not buy the property the town did, the town reimbursed the trust for those purchase expenses as part of the bond. Mm -hmm. So was that money spent for preserving affordable housing or not? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's just, and w the further we got into it, the crazier it got. <laughs> so so we, we are aware and have been aware for some time, although it's been pushed to the back burner by having this project. And we meant to revisit this after town meeting last year. And we just got busy with 80 Beale Street and didn't do it. So um, the trust is going to go back and look at the, uh, the bylaw that describes the allocation article and see if we can propose a change to the bylaw that clarifies that so that we can really, uh, we're moving towards uh, structuring um, some kind of reporting to town meeting that's very uh, deep and uh, really clarifies what the trust is doing so people can understand it. Um, it's, and people are feeling a little skeptical about this idea of speculatively, how, based on our experience so far, how can we speculatively commit to spending money in certain ways when it's it's just it's all speculative so it's it's hard to it's hard to grapple so we're going to revisit that after town meeting and take some time to look at the article now this whole allocation plan thing this is this is the kicker um it came from the the uh, art the duxbury affordable housing plan the woman who had the consultant who'd written theirs recommended this to us as a as a possible way of providing the town some uh, view into what the trust was doing, and we adopted it. Well, guess <clears> what? <throat> trust got a call from some people in Ducks, and uh, some people, I got an email saying, would you come to this town meeting and talk about what your housing trust has done because we want to adopt one. And I said, oh, great. What town is this? Duxbury. Oh, they no. never adopted it yet. No. So we are the ones trying to make this allocation plan <laughs> thing work that we thought we had gotten from Duxbury. Where so it worked. 
<laughs> that was what we yeah. were thinking, but it turns out that, that we, so anyway, so that is the future. Uh, the trust will come back with some suggestions along that line and hopefully get your point of view. That's a good idea. We'll bring the That's article good. for this year back with the caveat that what we have learned is that it's not too helpful, this allocation plan article, and we need to come up with a different way of making sure no. the town has views into what the trust is if, doing. If I could just muddy the waters a little. Uh, Please do. The, the, the CPC has money dedicated to affordable housing, and the coordination efforts required uh, for the CPC uh, to assure that we're maximizing the taxpayers' money on this area is something we have been behind on in our allocation formula as well. So it needs, we need some joining of forces mm -hmm. here, and I would suggest that we... Well, I will just mention, just so you know, there are towns in which routinely, every single year, mm -hmm. the affordable housing reserve is appropriated to the trust. Not anything beyond the reserve. That's all, you know, all the money so that the are available. So the money is in there so they know how much they have to yeah. spend. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, so that's something you can consider. There are okay. some towns where well, they do that. That has that was not the approach we, we have, took. We have a meeting tomorrow night, and I'll, uh, I'll raise that question. That wasn't the approach we took when we set up the... No, uh, the, no but, but it's, it's become evident that, that we're happens. not managing it as well as we could, yeah. and that's... And we certainly learned that the advantages of the trust in terms of being able to react instantly to market opportunities like Lincoln School Apartments, like 80 Beale Street, that's really, uh, that's what the trust is for. And so the idea of nailing down speculatively what you're going to do, the whole point of the trust is we can't speculate because we don't know what's going to come up on the market. So that, that, all, that all needs to be revisited. Um, I do wish the trust would go back and revisit. How do you buy up? these small starter Well, we homes. had, I, by golly, I did, you do I that? did it again. Because I uh, keep bringing yes, it up. <laughs> I know, and we had a long discussion about it. And, and uh, the interesting thing about it, of course, is there's been resistance to that in the past because every single unit that you create in that manner costs much more than, than a unit created by just building it um, or, or having it be 25% of a, of a 40B project. The problem with the 40B project is you get three times as many market rate units at the right. same time as the affordable units. Whereas, and I was trying to make this point, when we do, when if we other towns have this buy down program where if a condominium, for example, comes on the market, the trust buys it, puts an affordable restriction on it, and resells it at the affordable price. But in Hingham, that could cost the, the trust two hundred thousand dollars to three hundred thousand dollars for every unit that you mm -hmm. do. But on the other hand. The advantage of it is you're not getting uh, you're not getting four affordable units and and, right. and twelve market rate ones. You're getting one affordable unit on and taking one market rate unit off. And the economic impact to the town as a whole exactly. is actually almost positive because you are bringing in a, a younger family, somebody who couldn't really afford to be here. Well, it's, it's preserving the diversity that I know that we all would like to uh, not see eroded completely. So, I, so as we're going to re keep revisiting this discussion. I got it out there, and we're going to we reopen that because there's a value. It might be worth the, the question we're asking yourself is, how much are we willing to spend for one affordable unit? Because um, we are up against severe market forces here in Hingham. When you look at the market rate units from 80 Beale Street that are going to go on, 1,400 square feet and they expect to get $500,000 for them. Those are the market forces that we're up against when we're trying to create affordable housing. And so, so how much is it worth it? So we're, the discussion will be ongoing, and I will okay. you know, keep <clears throat> filling you up with promises to be very, very interesting. And, and, I'll, and I'll bring back to you for the, your consideration the feelings of the CPC okay, on this issue. Okay. Uh, can and I just make yes. one other uh, point? Uh, for those of you who in the past few weeks have had trouble on your compact, Comcast uh, TV reception of these broadcasts, uh, we have taken some steps to improve that, but I am uh, not confident, to be very frank, that they are working. Uh, since after a series of these uh, uh, broadcasts, I've received calls of people who have been dissatisfied with it. So if you are having trouble on your Comcast uh, reception this evening, would you please let the town administrator's office know? We'd appreciate it. If you can hear, Bruce. If you can. Now, <laughs> and those of you from Pios, would you call your friends on Comcast? And tell them what we said. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, I think that about uh, finishes our agenda for this evening. So unless there's anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so second. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for joining us. I have to go see my boys. Dad.